Hey, how's it going? Been a little while since our last YouTube video, but we're back and we're making tutorials. So today, the tutorial we're going to focus on is how I made this video right here. I know you saw the video at the intro, but thought I'd play it again just to make sure we are making a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this AI time-lapse trick video using only your mobile phone. Now, there are one or two ways to make it on a computer or something more advanced, but today, you know, everyone has a phone, everyone can make this video without the fancy equipment and everything like that. And that's what I'm trying to prove and help the average person as opposed to someone who's way more advanced or whatever like that. So let's kick straight into it. I'm gonna show you at first how to make it and everything like that. And hopefully by the end, you'll have learned your knowledge on a bit of mobile videography tricks and hope you enjoy. So first things first, subscribe. No, I'm just messing. But first things first, if you want to, do subscribe. But first things first, you want to make a hyperlapse on your phone. This video isn't focused on the video, it's focused on the edi editing part of it. So if you want to learn how to do a hyperlapse, I've made a video before here, or you can Google online on YouTube and find how to make a hyperlapse. So once you've filmed your hyperlapse, take a screenshot of every single frame in your video. There are applications on the App Store, I believe, I've, I've seen the comments of my videos, that you can download these apps and it'll take screenshots of your, your video for you so you don't have to do manually frame by frame but I'm not sure which app this is so if someone does know it comment down below I'll pin your comment to the top so everyone can access it or you can do it with Premiere Pro just export every frame it is a bit time consuming but once you have that done let's kick straight into the editing so once you have all your pictures saved it's gonna look something like this like a timeline of just loads of photos upon photos now it might be kind of daunting now but it's gonna be easy to edit. So then you go over to Photo Leap, you open up Photo Leap, and then you press plus to start a new project. So you choose one of these images, let's take the door one for example. There it's imported. Then you tap on these three icons in the top right corner, press on the plus, and then press describe it or sketch it. I personally go for describe it. Basically you type into this text box a picture you want to superimpose into the, the new image. So because I'll be replacing the door, which is rectangle with the picture, I'm just gonna look up epic, um, epic scenery press search and I'd like, before I press generate, I'd like to do a dystopian one because the dystopia vibe is quite cool. So it's gonna generate four images for me and there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. You can generate another if you like. I kinda of like this one so I'm gonna press on edit in the top right corner and then it adds it into my scene. Now I just scroll across to the bottom to find transform and line up these corners so this might take a little bit of, of moving around but you wanna to go to transform and line up these boxes with the corners of the doors so similar to that that's pretty much that done okay it's not perfect but like for the sake of example that's what you do you line it up with all the corners and then you just go to the eraser tool in the bottom right corner and then you slightly want to just erase the edges just to make it a little bit more smooth you can press on the brush here and then make your size really big and make your turn off your edge avoidance and make your feather big and then you can just tap around the edges and it's gonna slowly erase the edges to make it a little bit more of a blend around the place. So you can do this for every single frame, a different photo in every frame, or you can use the same photo superimposed for like four frames in a row. Now, I was asked by one or two people, how did I get the clock faces to rotate as in the clip right here? So I'm gonna show you how I did that now. So first let's focus on this one. So we want to press generate, describe it, um, colorful, moon or no colorful clock because that makes more sense colorful clock generate it'll generate an image of a clock hopefully okay so there's the colorful clock we'll press edit we're just going to go to cut out and it should be able to cut it out as an object for me automatically object it cuts it out now because the picture doesn't isn't a full circle it's not perfect but it'll do so then i just resize it and cover the area of the clock in the actual picture again i go over to transform transform the edges to try and pull it to make sure it fits perfectly in the image. So how I'd get this clock to rotate from frame to frame, I'd go to this image, press export, JPEG, max, export it, and then it saves. Then I press plus and I go to the next frame in the sequence, size it up, drag it on top, and then I reposition this clock with the next frame in the sequence, but this time I rotate it 90 degrees and then I position it and then I use transform once again to make sure it fits perfectly and then press export 
save it, and then if you put these two side by side, the clock is gonna look like it's turning. You can also do rotations of like 10 degrees each time, so it looks like it's turning slower, or you know, if you want to do faster, you can do 180 degrees, but then it'll just look like it's flicking all over the place. Finally, um, another little trick I did, someone asked me how the sky, I got the AI sky to move behind the buildings like it does here. That's a very similar technique, it's quite easy, so first we're just gonna get a picture of our building. Let's say it's this one. Right, so first I go cut out, and I'm just gonna use automatically cut out the sky. So press on sky, sky's gone, it's that easy. Then I go to generate, describe it, um, colorful sky. And I want a kind of cartoon one, so I'm gonna tap on anime. I'll wait for this anime sky to form. These are pretty cool, so let's go for this one here. Edit, what we wanna do is drag it underneath the original layer, frame it up in behind, look it almost looks unreal already. So we want to frame it up so that the, the left side of the image is just at the left side of the picture. Then we want to save the image. Next, you import the next sequence of the same building, your next screenshot in line of your, of your hyperlapse. You want to import that video, style it up, drag it under both, delete your original layer, and then drag your sky underneath. Go to that layer, press cut out, cut out the sky, and this time, you want to move your sky ever so slightly over to the side. Just a little bit, not that much. And then you press export. And then again, you add on the next picture in the frame, move the sky a little bit, export it. The sky moved over a little bit, new picture, export over and over again. And you come up with your own designs. Then once you have all this done, you head over to Video Leap, which is just the best mobile video editing app. Photo Leap would be more of a photo editing app. So then you press plus, Plus, find all your clips. So you find all your clips and then you select all your clips. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna select this many. Um, you can press on settings in the top right corner and press photo duration set at 0.5 seconds. It unfortunately doesn't naturally upload any, any faster than that. So then you press add to project. Then for each picture, you zoom in on the time frame. If I can, hold on. Yeah, you zoom in, then you tap on each frame and then you just shrink it down to one frame long. So. Just do this over and over, shrink them all down one frame long. It won't take that long to do. It, it looks a lot more tedious than it is. It's a very simple task, you can do it in no time. In fact, uh, if you pull it down to the max, it's gonna naturally go to one frame. And then when you flick through, it just flicks through the video for you, as you can see on my screen. Okay, and that's it. It might seem a bit time consuming, a bit long, but it is a very simple process if you're willing to put in the little bit of extra hours, extra work that would be needed for the video like this. But then again, like I put it up online and it did really well, got a really big response. And then the short tutorial I made online, I think it's on like a million views on Instagram at the moment, which is crazy. And it has so many saves. This is the most saves I've ever had. I think it was on like, like so look at the saves. I don't know what they are. I'll put them on the screen here, but the ratio of saves to likes is almost identical. So loads of people are saving it and liking it. Whereas loads of people are saving it and not liking my videos should be bad out but anyway hope you enjoyed a lot of tutorials coming your way so this is the first of many so consider subscribing if you enjoyed it leave a comment if you like any other video requests or anything like that and hopefully see you soon